there are physicians who I think are going to be replaced ultimately by artificial intelligence or largely replaced by artificial intelligence. Um, I think that there's very often the diseases that we deal with require compassion and empathy. I mean, can you imagine a robot telling somebody that they had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or that they had Alzheimer's disease or that they had Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease and were destined to die or telling the family. I mean, how do you, and, and you also have to gauge the individual. What is it that they want to know? You have to get a, a sense because there's no, nothing formulaic about it. it. It's something that you learn over the course of years on how to convey that information. And I will say that um, augmenting, it, it, the, the artificial intelligence will augment what we do. There's no question about it. Uh, it's doing that now. So I, in my mind, there is a role for artificial intelligence when it comes to the practice of neurology. What is that role? That role is it's going to help us in terms of diagnoses, I mean, it may suggest when you put a diagnosis on the, in the record, it may suggest others that may make more sense. Uh, it will probably suggest some testing that would be worthwhile that you may or may not have thought of. It might help you in terms of interpreting that testing, saying, you know, uh, this test has a certain sensitivity and specificity that uh, in this setting means that it's not particularly valuable. And as we have increasing numbers of therapies for a wide variety of conditions, it's going to perhaps be able to search the most recent medical literature and say to you, when you put that diagnosis in and you select a, a therapy, it may say, you know what, this might be a better therapy given this patient's demographics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think it's going to be very helpful in terms of assisting with the diagnosis, not necessarily making the diagnosis. I think it's going to be very helpful in terms of helping you select the appropriate test, interpreting those tests, and then suggesting therapies. But it's not going to replace the neurologist for the uniqueness of what the neurologist does. When you obtain a history as a physician, there's a certain amount of interpretation that goes on. So not everybody is, knows the medical terminology. Sometimes even the lay terminology is mistaken. So it's not infrequently, uh, particularly when I was practicing elsewhere, not so much in Philadelphia, where people would come in and they say, I have numbness. Uh, I'm, I'm numb on my left side. And you say, well, what do you mean by numb? And it turns out they didn't mean numbness, they didn't mean a loss of sensation, they meant weakness. Well, if a computer or a robot was to get numbness, what they would think would be very different than if they get weakness. By the same token, if a patient comes in and says, you know, Doc, I'm dizzy. Well, what does that mean? Are you dizzy because you're lightheaded and you feel like you're about to faint? Or are you dizzy because you feel like you just stepped off a merry-go-round and you're spinning around. Very, very different things. So there's a amount of interpretation in the language that's very important and would, in my mind, be very difficult to program a robot to do. So um, I think that that's another important component and that goes to the history taking before the physical examination.